Hey everybody, it's Dream Crusher back again for another Murder Mystery Monday. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I know I did. I did a lot of relaxation and meditating. I've been trying to get back to my zen mode. But let's get into it. So today I will be playing Dead by Daylight and discussing a very famous serial killer. Some that many of you guys may know, maybe you guys don't. Who knows, but I guess you'll find out. So today I will be talking about Richard Speck. So who exactly was Richard Speck? I will give you guys a little overview before we dig into these notes. So in 1966, Richard Speck committed one of the most horrifying mass murders in American history when he brutalized and killed eight nurses living, sorry, eight student nurses living on Chicago's South Side. So, yeah, he he did some things, child. He did some things. But let's find out more about Richard. So Richard Speck. Um, captured the nation's attention during the summer of 1966 after murdering eight female students who lived together on Chicago's South Side. Before then, he had been responsible for other acts of violence against his family and others, but had a knack for escaping the police. So he was an escape artist, if you may say. So after his skill... Oh my goodness, I'm sorry guys, I can't speak. After his killing spree in 1966, a manhunt ensued where he was captured two days later and he spent the rest of his life in prison until he died of a heart attack in 1991 at the age of 49. Wow. All right, so let's dig into it. Let's get into Richard's early years because as we all know, when it comes to the serial killers, a lot of times there are signs in the childhood and adolescent years to kind of give us a prelude to what is going to happen in the future. So let's find out what happened with Richard. So born Richard Benjamin Speck. Um, he was born on December 6, 1941 in Kirkwood, Illinois. Um, he was born into a large family, very religious, where he was the seventh of eight children. That's a lot of fucking kids. I'm sorry. Just got to put that in there. It's a lot of children, a lot of kids. Um, after the death of his father, um, when Speck was six, his mother remarried, moving the family to Dallas, Texas. The children suffered considerable considerable, excuse me, cannot speak today, considerable abuse um, at the hands of their drunken stepfather. Speck's childhood was marked by juvenile delinquency, alcohol abuse, which soon led to petty crime. So, like I said in the beginning, it usually is something in the childhood and those adolescent years that kind of shapes and molds some of these people into the adults that they become. Not saying that that is like the determining factor, but it is statistically shown, shown that that plays a huge role in who people develop to be or however I want to put it. I'm sorry. I can't think today, guys. I'm tired. I'm tired. But yeah, like the adolescent years and the childhood years, they play a huge role into the type of adults we become. In November of 1962, Speck married Shirley Malone and they had a daughter together. Um, their marriage bliss was short-lived due to Speck's, you know, draw to crime. He basically committed theft and check fraud in 1963, which landed him in jail. Um, having been paroled in January of 1965, he lasted only four weeks on the outside before being arrested again for aggravated assault. So he just had a repeated history um, of crime. So he just, he was one of those individuals that could not survive on the outside. They just fell right back into their old ways, which, you know, unfortunately is crime. So after the aggravated assault, he was jailed for another 16 months, which he served six. See, that is the issue. That is the issue. They let some of these repeated criminals get off on, you know, light sentences, you know, not 
saying specifically what type of people, but I think we all know they get a slap on the wrist until they come out and do something horrific. Um, but yeah, so he only served six months and then he got out. So during this period, he had the words born to raise hell tattooed on his arm and his wife basically experienced that firsthand. So he was not only a criminal, but then he was also abusive to his wife. She filed for divorce in January of 1966. Um, after Speck was arrested for burglary and assault, he fled to Chicago to seek shelter with his sister, Martha, um, for a couple months. He spent a few days there traveling to um, Illinois or Mon Monmouth, Illinois, um, where he stayed with some family and friends from his early childhood. So he basically started living off of people, started becoming a leech. He didn't want to you know, contribute to society. He just wanted to be a criminal and leech off of whoever he could find, which unfortunately became family and friends. So let's dig into these horrifying crimes. For a short time, he was a carpenter, but he would soon get into trouble again um, when he viciously raped and robbed um, a 65-year-old woman named Virgil Harris um, in her home on April 2nd, 1966. And on April 13th, um, a barmaid at his local tavern named Mary Kay Pierce um, was also brutally beaten to death. So he committed both of those crimes within like what, like maybe a week and a half of each other. So he raped and robbed a 65 year old woman and then he brutally beat um, a barmaid at his local tavern to death um, he managed to deflect the police questioning and escape once again but the police discovered some of Harris's personal effects in his vacant hotel room that conclusively tied him to her attack so you know he escaped even though they found evidence but you know he was an escape artist. He managed to get away with all these crimes over all these years. So he just kind of became an expert in some sort of way. Eventually, Speck found work on a ship and it began to seem like bodies turned up wherever Speck had been. So he was basically visiting locations and just leaving a trail of bodies <laughs> at every location that he visited. Um, Indiana authorities wanted to interview Speck regarding the murder of three girls who had vanished on July 2nd, 1966, and whose bodies were never found, um, which is horrifying. I mean, this man just is just murdering people no matter where he goes. Um, and then Michigan authorities also wanted to question Speck about his whereabouts during um, the murder of four other females age, um, age between 7 and 60. I mean, and the crazy thing is, like, it's not like he's killing, like, one or two people here or there. Like, that's bad enough as it is. But he is killing, like, three plus people in every location. Like, what is this man's body count? I'm just curious, like, honestly. Because... Like I said, it's not like he's killing like one or two people. You're talking about three plus people in like pretty much every single location that he's visiting. Like that that is insane. That is insane. Honestly, it really is. So yeah, so he the Michigan authorities wanted to question him about the whereabouts of those four um females. And his ship had been in the vicinity at the time. So Speck, however, seemed to be, um, you know, once again, being a, the escape artist that he is, he made he managed to make a quick escape um, and kept the police forces guessing. So he, he managed to escape the questioning and all the 
things that come along with that because he vanished like in thin air just he was out of there these attacks however were kind of like a build up to the massacre that would occur um on July 13th of 1966, when Speck arrived on the doorstep of a townhouse in South Chicago, which served as a communal home for a group of eight young student nurses from nearby Chicago's community hospital. When 23-year-old, um, I'm going to try to pronounce this name, I think it's Corzon Amaro, opened the front door um, to Speck's knock he forced his way in at gunpoint. Speck then rounded the nurses up and ordered them to empty their purses before tying them all up. He proceeded to brutalize them in the most horrific fashion over the following few hours. Those who had been fortunate enough to be out of, um, like out of the house at the time um, of his arrival found themselves also being subjected to brutal attacks when they returned home later that evening. A total of eight women um, between the ages of 19 and 24 systemically bound, robbed, beaten, and strangled and stabbed during Speck's frenzy. According to the New York Times, at least one of the victims were raped. Um, the body count was so high that he felt to notice that um, Amaro had opened the door for him on his arrival and had man and managed to hide herself um, under one of the bids. When he left hours later, taking the money he had stole stolen, she cowered in her hiding place, terrified for hours before finally um, summoning the courage to seek help. She climbed out of the window ledge and screamed for help, at which point concerned neighbors summoned the police. So if it wasn't for this young lady, like, hiding herself, it probably would have been days before they realized that this whole massacre had occurred in this house. So let's find out more about how the police, you know, arrested Richard Speck. So the police arrived, um to scenes of carnage and took Amaro into custody, interviewing her, then proceeded to construct basically a sketch of the perpetrator. So fortunately, Amaro remembered um, the distinct um, born to raise hell tattoo along with the image of basically the person. Um, so they were able to get a good sketch, um, which enabled the police to identify their suspect as Richard Speck. Nationwide inquiries um, also raised the other incidents in which, in which Speck was suspected, as well as his criminal record. In the days before, um, you know, fingerprinting identification, it took almost a week to identify the prints um, found in the townhouse to be his. You know, back then, the technology wasn't as great as it is now. I mean, even today's standard, like, technology in some areas is not as good. But, you know, either way, they have the whole fingerprinting database where they can run people's prints. That's what I was trying to get across. So media coverage um, splashed sex image all over the front pages and in a desperate bid to escape, Speck tried to commit suicide on July 19th, 1966. So he basically was trying to take the coward's way out. He then killed and murdered all these people, but then you, you're not ready to face justice. Like, no, sir. So he attempted to slash his wrist in a seedy hotel he was staying in. Um, changing his, changing, oh my goodness, could not speak, changing his mind at the last minute, minutes, oh my goodness, last minute, he summoned help and was taken to Cook County Hospital, where again, his tattoo gave him away. He was arrested and taken into custody. Um, however, he was in 
the need of surgery to repair his severed artery and was watched over by dozens of policemen who were determined to ensure that his days of making lucky escapes were over as they should so let's get into the trial so Speck's trial began on april 3rd 1967 and his claim that he had no recollection of the eight murders committed um, placed Caraz Carazon Amaro, I know I'm pronouncing her name wrong, but close enough, in the spotlight as the star witness. Despite concerns about her ability to testify after her hearing Odile, ordeal, oh my goodness, she gave a faultless performance, impressing the jury with every detail that um, happened that evening as well as identifying Speck. So the trial lasted just 12 days and on April 15th, 1967, the jury found Speck guilty of all eight murders after less than an hour of deliberation. Good, as they should. The judge sentenced Speck to death, as he should as well. The aftermath. Excuse me, sorry. A little hiccup there. Um, in 1972, Speck's death sentence was commuted to 50 to 100 years in prison when the U.S. Supreme Court abolished capital punishment. Speck was never officially charged um, with the murders of which he was suspected prior to the events that took place in South Chicago's townhouse, and officially those cases remain unsolved. I feel like they should have went ahead and, you know gave him like sorry my goodness i feel like they should have went ahead and you know placed those charges on him because then my thing is like i think about the families of those young girls who were killed like now they're never going to get the proper closure that they need like of course you know taking him to trial for those murders it's not going to bring their loved ones back but at least the case will be solved and closed and they can move on with their lives in some sort of way because they have that closure. But now it's just like those cases are just remained unsolved, even though they are pretty sure that Speck committed those crimes. But that's just, you know, my little input. I know you guys didn't ask for it, but you're going to get it anyway. So in 1996, five years after Speck's death, um, a TV journalist made a public prison video which showed Speck taking drugs and engaging in sex with another inmate during the 1980s while he was an inmate at Statesville Correctional Institute. Oh, wow. Speck appears to have breasts in the video, apparently as a result of hormone treatment he received while in prison and is wearing women's underwear in the video. Speck also casually admits to the killing of the nurses, describing the, the strangulations in some detail. Oh my goodness! In some detail and bragging about the strength required to kill someone in this manner. The video's release caused a major scandal with the Illinois Department of Corrections, and was widely cited as justification for the reintroduction of the death penalty in 1991 while still in prison speck died of a heart attack wow that that's crazy i mean that was pretty insane but yeah guys that was richard speck he was a trash person if i ever heard about one but you know I'm not here to judge. I am just here to take notes and provide the information to you guys about these serial killers that we have come to know. So, yeah, guys, that's this week's Murder Mystery Monday. I hope you guys check me out on Wednesday for... Oh, actually, I am lying. There will not be a Wicked Women Wednesday this week because Far Cry 6 is coming out, guys. So make sure you tune in. I will be covering... <coughs> Oh my goodness. I will be covering the whole campaign of Far Cry 6. So make sure you guys check it out. Like, comment, and subscribe. And please go ahead 
and follow my channel guys i'm putting out this content and i would love to see my audience continue to grow but i hope you guys have a fantastic day um enjoy the rest of your week and i will talk to you guys next time okay bye